Hey, I'm Helen with Floating Yoga School here at Wild Thing Yoga in Bend, Oregon. Filming some prenatal videos today and wanted to take some time before I get into them to talk about why you want to take prenatal yoga or why you'd want to take prenatal modifications in your yoga practice. I have two reasons for this. The number one always is safety and health of both mom and baby. So being aware of what's happening with you, with baby, and protecting both of you. And the number two is comfort. Some things are just not gonna feel as good. How do you modify? Make it work in your body. I'll share with you some general tips and then I'll go into my personal experience. Always make sure you're cleared by your doctor or midwife, whoever is directing your care throughout your pregnancy before doing any physical activity. And the general rule is if you haven't done it before pregnancy, probably not appropriate to start during pregnancy. So if you haven't done any yoga, you'll wanna look for a class that's prenatal specific, very gentle, and ensure that the teacher has been trained and certified in prenatal yoga. Rules are, um, general rules, things to look out for, things to pay attention to. Number one, avoid excessive heat. So if you've practiced yoga before and you're comfortable in a warm room, about 80 degrees, you might feel comfortable continuing in that. If not, you'll probably wanna look for something around 70 degrees. Hot yoga is a no-no. So anything that elevates your body temperature above its normal temperature, 98.6 on average, is something that you wanna avoid. So no 95, no 100 degree yoga classes. Number two is avoiding anything laying on your belly, any prone poses or any deep twists after the first trimester. Typically that's when the belly starts to show, the baby has moved up in your body, out of your pelvis, into your abdomen or center. And so anytime we're laying, twisting, or compressing, could be sacrificing blood flow and health to the baby. Number three, um, avoid inversions. You'll see the crazy Instagram yogis doing handstands and headstands all throughout. For me, it doesn't feel good, I get dizzy, it doesn't feel comfortable or safe. And I always think about what happens if you fall out of something like that at eight months pregnant? Are you willing to risk the safety, the health of yourself and your baby? Um, number four, definitely be careful of overstretching. So in pregnancy, there's a hormone called relaxin that is released into your body and it creates more open joints to prepare your body for labor and delivery. So you, want to, you don't wanna to go too deep into hip openers or deep stretches. It may feel good and your body may feel more flexible, but you can overdo and overstretch. So be aware of that. Use props like blocks and bolsters to support and engage muscles rather than just going super deep into stretches. And then lastly, you'll wanna avoid any breath retention. My doctor personally said elevating your heart rate a little bit is fine, but going too high over about 140 beats per minute could be unsafe. Every doctor will say something different, so definitely check with yours. But those breath retentions where we're holding our breath or pumping our breath, like breath of fire or kapalabhati, could be uncomfortable and potentially unsafe for you and the baby. Cool, so as you might know or are starting to become familiar with, pregnancy is typically divided into three trimesters. In the first trimester, um, you're just starting out to be pregnant. Me personally, my yoga practice looked quite a bit different during my first trimester than before pregnancy. I felt tired, nauseated, generally exhausted, kind of wrapping my head around the fact that I'm creating a life, there's another body within me, I'm already working overtime. I did practice yoga, but I slowed down quite a bit, took it easy, modified, and I didn't practice quite as hard or as often as I did pre-pregnancy. Second trimester, um, I felt a lot better. So energy comes back, you feel like you wanna be active again. For a lot of women, this is sort of the golden trimester, things feel good. So I was back into a more regular yoga practice, but belly is starting to show, everything's getting a little bigger. So adapting to a new shape and way of moving your body. This is when modifications really start to, st start to happen or start to be necessary, using extra blocks, not taking deep twists or laying on your belly. And then now, third trimester, <laughs> definitely quite a bit bigger. Weight distribution is different, um, balance is off a little bit. For me, I'm starting to feel a lot of heartburn and acid reflux, so spending a long time in downward facing dog or any forward fold where my head is below my heart doesn't feel great. So I modify by dropping to my knees, taking breaks, and just really slowing down. 
One of the best things about yoga is it allows you to connect to your body, to your breath, to your baby. For me, it's been incredible to feel that connection, to understand what's happening within my body, to already feel like I have a relationship with baby through this entire process. And the biggest thing I can say or recommend is remembering that your breath is such a powerful tool. And by checking in with your breath, if it gets choppy, it's time to back off, slow down. If you can keep it smooth and steady, that's a good indication that body and mind and breath are all working together. So we'll take you through some prenatal flows. Um, there's some short practices to go through and also a video about modification. So how to modify a regular yoga practice or regular poses if you are pregnant. Thanks, enjoy.